this episode of American Greed. The $81 billion business of mass incarceration and how head of prisons, Chris Epps, makes a killing in the lock -em up state of Mississippi. Earl Berry has been a career criminal. He's normal, playful, and joyful, and likes to crack a lot of jokes. He's not doing a lot of joking today. What he controlled was just amazing. What Epps controls as the state's prison commissioner is a $350 million a year gold mine. Chris Epps gives. If Epps say a person should get this contract, he would. And takes. Like, he deserved to wear a Rolex watch. He deserved to drive a Mercedes Benz. Condos down on the Gulf Coast. Why would one business partner be paying another business partner's home mortgage? That's not out of the goodness of your heart. That's not an accident. Because Chris Epps knows everything from a bag of chips to a phone call home has a price tag. All of these services businesses are competing for, and they're worth a lot of money. And he's running one of the largest pay-to-play schemes in Mississippi history. Chris Epps touched everything, and it turned out almost everything Chris Epps touched was corrupt. Chris Epps likes to say he's the tallest hog at the trough. At some point, we reminded him that hog is typically the first to get slaughtered. At the FBI office in Jackson, Mississippi, the feds have called a friendly meeting with prison commissioner Christopher Epps, head honcho of the Mississippi Department of Corrections. We came up with the scenario to get him to come meet. He's used to going to meetings with public figures. He didn't necessarily think that something was wrong. Our initial interaction was very friendly, and then we just wanted him to see something real quick. Because today's gathering is, in fact, a carefully constructed ruse. For months, the feds have been tapping his phone and collecting undercover video. The results of those efforts are queued up on the video screen and ready to roll. And now they tighten the screws. We hit play. And that was enough for him to go, oh, no. We have video of those who had been paying the kickbacks to Mr. Epps handing him cash and having Mr. Epps just flip through the cash. It was routine appearing. He appeared to be visibly upset. And when I say upset, perspiring, shaking. There's no better persuasion tool than a video recording. He's not a good guy at this point. No matter what you may have thought of him prior to this, he's been on the take for the last seven to eight years. This is a story about the big business of locking people up. There's not a day go by that just don't cross my mind several, several, several times. And how it made Chris Epps very powerful and rich. To understand Chris Epps, it helps to understand where he came from. Epps' life would have been seen as almost uh, an American success story. I mean, he grew up in the poorest county in America, Holmes County, Mississippi. Raised on his grandparents' farm, Epps recalls pulling turnips and feeding chickens each morning before school. He applies that same hard work ethic to earn his degree in education before he takes a job with the Mississippi Department of Corrections. He begins at the bottom, a lowly guard. Epps has said in the past that he was at first terrified of being around so many felons, and with good reason. The state penitentiary, known as Parchman, has been notorious since 1901. Established more for profit than rehabilitation, according to Jerry Mitchell, a journalist and MacArthur genius who has investigated Mississippi prisons for years. Parchment was a plantation they essentially converted into a prison with the inmates working the fields. And by the way, they didn't just work their fields. They would dole them out to basically plantations around there. In other words, it's a for-profit scheme. They had these 
inmates working at the cotton fields from sunup to sundown. And the state was just raking in the money from this. And they could whip them. And they actually used that whip up, up until the 70s, which is hard to believe, but it's true. In 1972, the federal court reminds Mississippi that slavery is over and forces it to abandon its plantation-era policies. But in Mississippi, reform is a hard road to hoe. Once prisons began to cost money, Mississippi didn't in turn really want to fund these prisons, so you had really horrible conditions. Civil lawsuits on behalf of inmates cite sewage backups, extreme isolation, and dehumanizing conditions. And they just up and put us in here, man. Look at the flow. Man. All the water in the flow, man. <laughs> Ain't no running water, mildew everywhere. Paint coming out of the wall, bro. Black mold, man. That's, that's black mold. Dawn, she asks that we use only her first name, has a husband who has served time at Parchment since 1998. She says in the summer, temperatures inside the prison hit 100 degrees or more. And you watch the older inmates, regardless of their crime, you just watch them one by one just kind of die off because they can't take the heat. Parchman, I believe, is pretty much the worst of the worst. Climbing the ranks to head of security at Parchman, Epps witnesses these transgressions and more. He saw the inmates hungry, fighting mad. He saw the sewers backed up. He saw the leaking roofs. So he came from knowledge. The abuses are as commonplace as they are shocking. Mississippi became one of the first prisons in the United States to have conjugal visits. Is it a humanitarian reform? Allowing inmates to connect with their loved ones? Not exactly. It's a money-making scheme that turns guards into pimps. The uh, correctional officers had someone type up the dummy marriage certificates and brought in prostitutes. And then the guards, of course, were getting a cut of this. Mitchell's sources suggest that Parchman's culture of corruption twisted Epps's moral compass. I've talked to people who were in prison, inmates in prison in the 1970s at Parchman, and they told me Chris Epps was corrupt way back then. It was something that had been going on the whole time. But Epps has learned how things work in the Mississippi prison system, and he has a knack for politics. He flies through the ranks collecting a string of awards, says former Mississippi Attorney General Jim Hood. He was in the National Guard. He served our state and our country. He was the president of the American Corrections Association. And, you know, you love to see somebody come up and run an agency and start at the bottom. Jimmy Gates covered state politics as a journalist for the Clarion Ledger in Jackson. This man was unique in the sense with his folksy style, you know, most everybody liked the Chris Epps. You know, he was loved on, in the black community. You know, he, he was loved in the white community, you know, at that time. I think he saw himself as being a public official, you know, maybe a, a, maybe even governor one day. In 2002, Epps is tapped for the number one post at the MDOC, Commissioner of Corrections. Stacy Keach here, feeling greedy for more videos like this one? Then be sure to like and subscribe right here on CNBC Prime.